Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's review what moment of inertia does to calculating the acceleration of a system. It does affect it. Not only do you have to move the mass, you also have to get an object to rotate and that takes energy, so therefore the acceleration will be less when we take into account that rotational motion. So we're trying to find the acceleration of a system like this. This is a simple Atwood machine, but now we have the pulley has mass. And so instead of using F equals MA, remember, we need, now need to use the torque equals I times alpha. This is the rotational equivalent of F equals MA, Newton's second law. So instead of using F net equals mass times acceleration, we use torque net equals the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angle acceleration. Just as before, the net torque will be all the torques aiding the acceleration minus all the torques opposing acceleration. The torque aiding acceleration is the torque caused by the big mass here, trying to accelerate it in this direction. The opposing torque will be the torque caused by this mass in the opposite direction. Remember, torque is force times distance. In this case, it will be the tensions on the rope times the distance from the point of rotation to the edge of the pulley. So when you plug that in, force times distance minus force times distance equals moment of inertia times the angle of acceleration with the proper substitutions. All the R's will cancel out. You have the difference between the tensions equals one half the mass of the pulley times acceleration of the system. And remember that this is how we calculate tension one and tension two. Tension one is the weight of this object plus MA because it's being pulled up against gravity. This is M2G minus M2A because it's allowed to accelerate downward with gravity. So you substitute those two in for T2 and T1, calculate with a little algebra, and there's the acceleration for a system when we consider that the pulley does half mass, and that is how it's done.